What's up everybody, you're watching Model Aviator. I'm here with my buddy Steve Royer. Steve uh, is gonna be the second pilot we're gonna feature on Model Aviators and their models. And that is not the F-18 that we're here to talk about, is it? No, it's not. No, it's I, <laughs> I didn't bring it along because it's probably hard to fit in this room. It's a great yes, room, but. It would be. So yeah. So tell us about your, your F-18. What, uh, sure. what kind is it? It's a uh, Skymaster Extreme F-18, about a 1 7th, 1 8th scale. Uh, it's an older design, but um, it's uh, a good-looking uh, F-18C Charlie, the classic that the F-8 that the uh, Blue Angels flew initially. Now they switch over to the Super Hornet. Um, it's fiberglass construction with wood plywood inside, and uh, it's got a single turbine inside that goes out through a wide pipe or a bifurcated pipe. And um, it, I use a 20-channel receiver in there. I think I'm using 15 of those channels. It's got smoke, gear, brakes, flaps, nice. ailerons, all the toys, lights, afterburner rings, scale cockpit. Yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. It looks good in the air. It, yeah. it does. And yeah. you're going to see it in the air for sure, but we thought yeah. we'd interview Steve first. Sure. So, uh, what's this airplane weigh? It weighs about 31 pounds dry, and then when I fuel it up, it takes about a gallon of um, diesel fuel. You can run Caro, Jet A, or diesel. I happen to run diesel. And then with smoke oil on top of that as well. So it weighs about 42 pounds wet, ready to fly. And how much thrust? It's got 31 pounds of thrust. So about a three quarters. Okay, you know, so. Three quarters percent. So you're a lot way. closer when you're low on fuel to one to one, but still not quite there. Correct. So in that case, you just have to manage your energy and get your energy up before you do a big vertical maneuver. Yeah, and you do a good you do a good job. So tell us about the process. You When you first got this airplane, you struggled mm -hmm. with it a little bit, and then you did some things to it. Now you got it flying pretty much on point. What would you do? Right. I found, I went online and found a bunch of other guys, about five other people that had the same airplane and tried to compare what I was seeing and what they were seeing. And the airplane had a tendency, you'd bank it over and the nose would drop. It, it, it would land really hard and it, it just seemed heavy. So following the manufacturer's instructions, which aren't much, uh, we were flying it per those specifications and it just felt nose heavy. Now, how, you said, how old is this airplane again? I think it was initially designed back in the 2000s. Okay, so yeah, it's a tw almost a 20-year-old airplane then. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's older. Okay. So, um, and it's it's uh, Skymaster Extreme, which is their semi-scale, so it's not as precise as their professional models that they make now. Um, uh, but, long story short, so with the instructions I found in turbines, they're very thin. I started out building a, uh, a Great Plains Trainer 40 in the mid-80s with wood glue, no less. I didn't know about CA. Right. And that instruction manual really taught you a lot. Well, at the turbine phase, a lot of people figure that once you've made it to the turbines, you kind of know what you're doing, but you still need CG and, and things like that. Well, the CG point on this airplane, it felt really nose heavy. Mm -hmm. So, which is appropriate for this channel, uh, we took an airplane that was flying okay, and then just slowly tried to improve it and I kept bringing the CG back, and I moved the CG back about three to four inches from where it's uh, where the manual manufacturer said. says, yeah, to where it's flying now, and now it's flying a lot better. Right. So I even upped the um, the uh, the power on the servos because they're full flying stabs. I even got the ailerons on the elevators, right. and upped everything to just try and make it fly better. It's worth noting, uh, just for the viewers too, that CG the manuals suggested CG. That is a suggestion. That's a starting point. It's usually right. a safe place to test an airplane out, right, Steve? Right. And, and if you're going to test it, you'd rather be more on the nose-heavy side than tail-heavy side. Right. However, you can be too nose-heavy, and that's what this airplane was. Right, right. I think I remember you let me fly it, and I think that was before you had it really sorted. <laughs> yes. And I remember he turned the gyro off, and, and I'm typically not a gyro guy, and I'm like, turn it back on! <laughs> it was not... Yeah. It was, it, it was a handful. It was kind of a handful then, yeah. but it's flying a whole lot better now. So, yeah. But yet, yeah, to, to kind of get back on the, the CG thing, flying the airplane is the way to get your CG set. The, right. the manufacturer suggested CG is a great place to start, but you do not ever have to stay there with anything. And to be honest, almost everything in this hangar yeah. is some form of off of the, what the manufacturer recommends right. to suit me and I'm sure most of your planes are that way too. Every now and then one's right on point but usually you change it for you don't you? Yeah and the key thing is to do it slow and methodical 
you don't want to do too big of a of a change and uh, if you can slowly like what I did I slowly brought the CG aft until all of a sudden I was like ooh that's a little too much aft I'd be in the flare and it would flare by itself I'm like okay that that's was a too little much, much. Yeah. yeah and then I slowly brought it back to where we're at right now yeah. and of course stall well. tests are really good when you're adjusting CG right that's a really important thing to do that you want to know what it does when you stall it because as you move it to the rear they progressively get a little bit more violent usually so. and like in one of your previous videos Best place to do your full first stall test is on the Maiden. Yeah. Take it off, get it up, see what it does, because you don't want any surprises down low on the ground. You want to do it upstairs, about yeah. three mistakes high. Yep, that's I, I totally agree. And I love what you said about, I've said that on the channel before, I can't remember what, what video we did about being methodical when you make changes. You always want to make one change, see what the airplane does, yeah. and then go from there if you make three or four changes you may get the desired result but you have no idea what, what worked. Content, yeah. it, it could have been a combination of all those things yeah. it could be one thing and you wasted your time on the other three true so very true. yeah so well awesome man yeah. uh, I am looking forward to them seeing you fly this airplane because it Thanks. is awesome Blue Angels paint scheme as you've seen the pictures have been flashing up of this gorgeous yeah. airplane so how is it that you ended up you have a T1 Mini correct correct I have a T1 Mini and it's also in the Blue Angels library, so it right. kind of looks like the A4, in my opinion. Yeah. But uh, I came across actually both of these airplanes. Uh, bought them both from a gentleman out in Arizona, and he is a, um, a former F4 pilot for the Navy. So all of his airplanes are Blue Angels library. That's cool. And um, he uh, has had a, a good run in the hobby. He's kind of getting a little older, and he's like, you know, it's it's time I start hanging up the hang the the, the hobby. Right. And uh, so I was able to buy both these airplanes from him. And That's awesome. Nice. And they're so both them gorgeous. Flying good. I mean, that yeah. Blue Angel paint scheme is good. just awesome. So, well, I got two other questions while I yeah. have you here because you've got a lot of experience. First thing, when it comes to to that Skymaster being 20 years old, was it intended for turbine originally, or was this a ducted fan model at first, and then you just it was converted to turbine? That's a good question. I'm not really sure the answer to that. I think this was always a turbine. Okay. Um, being that weight, I would think so, because 20 years ago, right, two ducted fans that could haul up. 30 plus pound airplane, I don't know if you could. I remember seeing my first turbine back in the early 90s, 92, 94, and it was Bob Violet flying, I think it was the JPX propane powered turbine. They'd use a scuba tank to get it started. It was, you know, and they'd throw those into his ducted fan models. Gotcha. And it was a lot of uh, ground work and maintenance. Yeah. As far as just getting the thing to run. Right. Nowadays, it's fully FADEC, digital control, just hit start. It goes through the whole start sequence. When you're done, it goes through the whole cool down sequence. Uh, we've really come a long way in the electronic side of the turbine technology. Yeah. And the turbines and nowadays I, run great. I so appreciate you bringing the first turbine to the channel. This will be the first turbine we featured on Model oh, yeah. Aviator, so that's, cool. that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, and so finally, while I've got you, and this is something that a lot of the EDF people are going to want to know, certainly uh -huh. something I'm curious about to pick your brain. I've flown Foamy's EDFs yep. with you. Uh, you and I both have composite EDFs yep. that are like 8S and over 150 miles an hour. And you've got a couple of turbines. Right. So tell me about the progression of that from a piloting standpoint. What is the difference in a foamy EDF, a composite EDF, and then when you get into turbines? Uh, good question. Um, mainly it has to do with wing loading and weight and energy management, if I could break that down. With the foamies, uh, when you add power with the electric, it's there, and the airplane, it'll jump right up. Uh, I've got the E-Flight F-16. Yep. Which you might have seen that already. I don't know if that's. Probably. I don't think they're going to see. They're going to see this one first. Okay. You're going to. You guys have seen the uh, two F-16s getting together. Yeah. Nah, that's me. That's Sorry. the guy. Yeah. yeah. More right rudder. <laughs> we anyway. had fun. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's fixed. It flies now. It, it is flies fixed. great. Yes. Yeah, so anyway. It is, and we're really going to do something stupid with it I'm next. Sure so stay will. tuned. Yes, I'm sure we will. But um, <laughs> so the EDFs, uh, they have instant response and the light wing loading, uh, which makes it uh, very forgiving. Uh, the composite models, they are a little heavier, run a little faster, and so, um, but you still have the quick power of the EDF, right. you just still have to manage your energy a little bit because of a higher wing loading, right. and it'll fly a little faster because of that. The turbines, you've got the higher wing loading, and then you have slow spool up on the turbines. If you have it all the way back to idle, which is still 30 to 40,000 RPM, it's right. going to take it a while to spool up to 150 to 184,000 RPM, depending on the size of the turbine. So that lag, um, when I'm typically doing a loop, 
when I'm pointing straight down at the ground is when I go all the way back to full throttle. Because by the time it gets to the bottom of that loop, then it's spooled up. That's interesting out. because you let me fly your T1 Mini. I right. actually got a chance to fly uh, the first turbine I ever flew. Mm -hmm. He let me fly it from takeoff to landing. Yep. And the interesting thing is when you get into a bigger turbine like that, you kind of go full circle. You know that you have the, a slightly higher landing because the plane's so much bigger. I right. guess maybe it's Reynolds' number. Mm -hmm. The the bigger turbines I notice land more like a foamy EDF. They actually land a little bit easier to me than a composite EDF does. Yeah. When uh, you start to get into the large turbines, the real expensive yeah. ones, you still need the same turbine, the ECS, the receiver, the batteries. A lot of those things are the same, but if you can put it into a larger airframe, your wing loading goes way down. Yeah. So the larger Havocs, the full-size Havocs, the right. big Avante XL, XXLs, uh, the Viper XXLs that are running like the 300 Newton turbines, yeah. which we have out at Georgia Jets, right. uh, those things land slow as all get out. Yeah, it's crazy. But I, you get some of the smaller ones like the, the BVM Bandits, yeah. which are all that same stuff in a smaller package. And it's just like a, a really, faster. really, yeah, it's like a really, really fast composite DDF that doesn't respond as good. And that's the other thing I, I remember about the T1 is I've gotten used to like the Avanti and the F-16, right. stuff like that, where you hammer that throttle and it gives you instant thrust. And it really does. It was alarming to me how long it took the engine, the turbine, to spool up on yeah. that T1. And then once it does, you go so fast, so fast, yeah. the acceleration is just Once so, it kicks in there. <laughs> once it kicks in, you're like, holy crap. Yeah, and and you have fun. to really get used to... to mm -hmm. Tightening in your head, you have to tighten your pattern up. Right. You have to think about making your turn sooner because you are out there. It's really something. You can cover some ground real quick. Yes, you can. Yeah, yep. you gotta have good eyes if you fly big. Patterns. So the other big question people are gonna want to know: yeah. How fast is your F-18? Oh yeah, I just uh, put that on the GPS the other day. Uh, I want to say it came out at 197. Wow, that is cooking. Like <laughs> a very slight yeah. uh, breeze. Yeah, but, that is cooking. Yeah, it, it, it never topped 200. It's 199. Yeah. Well, no, man, we, we have learned a lot about um, yeah. the differences in EDFs and, and your uh, your gorgeous Skymaster F-18. So the only thing left to do now is let Steve strut his stuff. Here's the flight. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it, man. Anytime. Take it easy.